Well, how many of us have totally conformed to the image of Christ yet? Let me look around. Not too many here, <laughs> including myself. All right. So um, every ounce of it has to do with results that affect inward behavior. All right. So we're, we're from this, we're starting to grasp that the kingdom rule is an inward rule in relationship to how we treat one another, to how we are, to how we... Uh, behave. Um, so every ounce of it has to do with the results that affect inward behavior, either as by the nature of Adam or by union in Christ and by the indwelling Christ. Therefore, we conclude that ultimately a change of kingdom, we, we're trying to define now a change of kingdom. Therefore, we conclude that ultimately a change of kingdom is a change of government within. Everybody agree with that? You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. Just because I say it, you don't have to agree with it. Um, in fact, there are, there are good times when you, you've been taught other things that you say, I don't agree with it, but add to that, but I'm open to the Lord, not you, Randy. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit will show you. He's good. If it's the truth, I may be wrong. So, it is a change of government within. In God's economy, <clears throat> we have been moved from one sphere in Adam to that of Christ. And this is how a change of lordship takes place. All right. Now, that, that change, I know, I shouldn't be looking for chalk, but that change of sphere, again, I need to try to help us to see that even though this happened a long time ago, um, that there is an effect and an, and an impact that we can bring when we are saturating in the truth as it is in Jesus. Okay, so we usually represent being in Adam as a square, because he's square, man. <clears throat> And we represent Christ as a circle because the circle is never ending. It's eternal. It's always going. All right. And then we always put the cross in between because that we, because, and let me, let me take the cross away just so you can see this, because there is no movement from the sphere of Adam to Christ without the cross. Okay, well, if that's true, then the movement is not as important as the means, which is the cross. The, the, if, if you, if you uh, believe in that movement without the cross, there is no movement. It's just, you're just saying that that took place. The cross made it happen. All right, how? Jesus took on the nature of Adam he who knew no sin was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Where? In him. Okay. So took that nature, crucified the old, old nature, and then we're raised up. But we're not raised up. We're raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places. In. Okay. So the resurrection in this case, dealing with, with this sphere of truth, the resurrection is a corporate or, or a, um, I'm always wanting another word, of a, a glorious word, and I can never find that word. It is one where we're all crucified. We are crucified together. We are raised up together and made to sit together. You see that? <clears throat> all right. So what does that mean? That means that this reality right here, this eternal reality in God that, that stretches all time 
it means that it is, number one, a finished work with God. Okay. But to really be active in it, in it, we have to exercise faith. And again, not just faith that it happened 2,000 years ago. I believe, in, I believe in that historical reality. Or I believe it because Randy says it. Or I believe it because Romans 5 says it. Um, God, by his Holy Spirit, wants to breathe this in you and make it how you See yourself and how you see others. No, no longer know one another after the flesh. All right. All right, good. That's the best response I've got all night. Okay. I'll drink to that. Good job. All right. So, um, So the change of lordship, though, you sort of move on down now, that timeline, you move on down there, and that Lord that rose from the dead is Christ crucified, but if you're born again, he lives in you. And so you move on down the road here, and the manifestation now we're talking about of this is when you reckon not only yourself dead, but alive unto God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm alive to God through this guy, and he also lives in me, and he can manifest his kingdom reality through me. Okay? Well, brother, that happened 2,000 years ago. I mean, how are we supposed to get hold of that? You got the, the living reality of it inside of you. It's called the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? You know, well, that's how the kingdom comes in earth, right there. That's how the kingdom comes. Thank God. Okay, so what, what is that the result of? It's a result of two things in Christ and Christ in you. But you couldn't do Christ in you 2,000 years ago because you weren't around 2,000 years ago. Can I get amen on that? It's not rocket science, people. <laughs> you, there's no way, you know, you can, you can do the Christ in you thing now. And that only works based on all that was done here at Calvary. And when you reckon on that, you do not just reckon yourself dead with Christ. You reckon yourself alive unto God through Christ, not alive unto Jesus. What's important? <laughs> it's a huge difference. Because that would mean, well, you're just alive unto God, alive unto Jesus now. Well, you're not alive unto Jesus unless you're one with Jesus. You have to have life, and he's the life of the body. Amen? <laughs> All right. If this is true, then it sheds new light on Romans 10, 9 through 10, which says, if you confess the Lord Jesus, the inward master, as found in Romans 6, 14 through 22, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, but not you, except as found in him, you shall be saved. <laughs> shall I read that again? I think I might have added a few things in there. They are in parentheses. It's not as if I was taking liberties with the scripture. But, but I, I was, I'm trying to communicate these things. I'm trying to put the, the, the math equation we had last class into it. All right, so here we go again. Um, the scripture says, if you confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved, Right? All right, so here's my little addings in. If you confess the Lord Jesus, in parenthesis, the inward master, as found in Romans 6, 14. In other words, Romans 10 is built on Romans 6 that's talking about oneness. It's talking about this principle here, Romans 5 and 6. 
Okay? So if you confess the inward master as found in Romans 5 and 6, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, but not you except as found in him, because he raised him. Isn't that funny? You have to believe that God raised him from the dead. I mean, isn't that funny? You, you go, I believe God raised me from the dead. You know, but I mean, that's where most people want to go with it, you know. And, uh, and there's nothing holy about leaving Jesus out of this stuff. There's just nothing righteous in it. It is wrong to the bone. The father wants his son, and he wants us in his son, and he's pleased to put us in the bed. He could have put us in Michael the archangel or Gabriel the angel of war. You know what I mean? And go, well, you're, I'll just join you to them. They're pretty good fellas. You know, they don't sin, so you won't sin, so that'll solve the sin issue. To him, it's not a sin issue. It's a Christ or not a Christ issue. Okay? Christ in his body solves the sin issue okay and does it very well might i add you know all right <clears throat> well, i forgot to add the last part here you shall be saved <laughs> <clears throat> this confession is not just words it is a confession before god of placing yourself under his lordship or trusting him to bring the kingdom but the kingdom doesn't come by good works. It comes by the king. All right. So, uh, let's see. Where was I? To do this is not just to change master, but to change the sphere of one master to that of the other. No longer in Adam, but in Christ. That's the theological. No longer in Adam, in Christ. Here's the practical release of faith. No longer I, Christ lives in me. Okay? It's, but that's only an outworking of what's true in him already. And what's true done by him. And you have to embrace that. And, and so, you know, there's times when you look at yourself and you go, well, you know, it ain't Christ. Well, maybe what's coming out of you right now, but you cannot let go of this. You know, you stay with the Lord and he'll take care of you. I believe that. I'm a pastor. I wouldn't lie to you. You know what I mean? What I mean is I'm a shepherd. I wouldn't tell sheep dumb, bad stuff. Oh, just go play with wolves. It'll be all right. All right. So, Romans 14, 7 through 9 speaks of Jesus' lordship in terms of life and death also. That's, I'm about to read it, Romans 14, 7 through 9. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. What? What? No man liveth to himself, and no man dies to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. <laughs> For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be, both, be, be Lord both of the dead and the living. All right. Now, I kind of spell that out, and I'm not sure if I do it right here. Yeah, I do a little bit. I see um, I see I see the kingdom in terms of a cycle. And anytime you have a cycle, you're going to have a circle, right? Okay, but within that within the circumference of that circle there is an ongoing thing that's happening and I see the kingdom of God or I see the manifestation of Christ in his body in terms of uh, let me just I'll start up here let's 
fill that right. And then down here is death. Okay, a cycle of death and resurrection, an ongoing cycle. I guess I just went counterclockwise. I don't guess it matters. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't matter. He can take you any direction from death and you're going to reach resurrection. And you can take you any direction from resurrection and you're going to reach death. All right. So what am I talking about in relationship to this? I'm talking about whether we live or whether we die, we're the Lord's. Okay, well, we all go, well, I know, uh, yeah, that's right. If I'm on the planet, I'm the Lord's. And if I die and go in the grave, I'm the Lord's. Amen. Well, does that really make any difference to say that other than, you know, something you probably already knew, you know? But there is this, there is this ongoing cycle where there's going to be times where man, it's the, the, the Lord is preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. It's resurrection time. He's going to have you honored and they're going to have to, you know, stuff happens. And favor comes and blessing comes. And, and uh, you know, there, there's just a lot of manifestation of um, spring, <coughs> if I may put it that way, instead of the dead of winter. But there are there. But if you're there, don't think this is it. I've attained. This is what I'm here for. No, that's just part of what you're here for, because that resurrection is only the result of death. In fact, death had to happen first. The only reason why I didn't put death up here is because that would be death. Resurrections up. You know what I mean? But you actually have to start with death move into resurrection. So how does that cycle begin? It started with his death. And it's first his death, just recognized by God, and I won't get into all that, because there, but there is a difference. Where God just recognizes Christ's death, Philippians 2 is a perfect example of that. Okay, But then God, under a certain another form of that, will recognize your death with Christ. Okay. In that, that's the beginning, that's the seed, except a seed fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bring it forth resurrection. Okay? It's automatic. If you see, if you see, if you see, wrong, you know, the Christian life in a wrong manner, you're going to see it like, okay, I'm going to live for God, and the goal is that God's going to bless me as much as possible, but the devil's going to attack me some, but don't worry. God's going to rush in, beat him up, and then lift your arms, and you're going to look like Rocky. Da, 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 you know, and everybody's going to go, yay. You know, that's what we think. We think that's, oh, I live for those moments, you know. Do you, really? You know, you need to be living for that death part so that more life can come forth instead of siphoning off all the resurrection for yourself. I don't know how many of you got that, but that's, there was something in there. There was a zinger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is. Selfish Christians are always siphoning off the resurrection, and you find very few. We call them dedicated Christians. I call them Christ-filled Christians that they are willing to go into death that others may have life. Paul said it, death worketh in me, but life in you. He saw it just like this, okay? If we need more life in the church, what does is, what is everybody say? What does most pastors say? We need more life in the church. We need, how about revival? You know, yeah, you know, we need revival, and revival's fine, but I believe that many of the true revivals that happened were forms of resurrection out of somebody else's death, and, there, I, and some of them I can prove. You can go and point, here's where it was. Yeah, it's there. It's there. You find it all the time. It's an amazing thing. Once you begin to grasp this, then you begin to see this is the kingdom of God. This is how it works. You know, 
And uh, anyway, let me take a, get a breath and take a drink here. Keep praying for me. Y'all praying for me at all while I'm up here? Because I'm just, woo! <laughs> I'm fading fast. Amen. I know we can. I want more life. So I'm going to stay down here in death. <clears throat> I live more for the death than I do the resurrection. I do. I know that. You may not believe that, but my whole existence is centered on the death part that others may have life, and I'm not afraid of death at all on any form, any form, any form. Because if you enter into it by Christ and by his nature and by his spirit, it's, a, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. And I know a bunch of you know that and already live according to that too. It's not as if I'm something special or whatever because that's not true. All right, let me read this. And <clears throat> the death of Christ was purposed to bring us to where the Lord life within us may manifest in resurrection times or times requiring death to self, or just death, so that others can receive life. Should I read it again? Okay. So I'm referring to the Lord life as Christ in us. The death of Christ was purposed to bring us to where the Lord life within us may manifest in two different forms here, in resurrection times or times requiring death. And I put death to self. It, it's not necessarily, but certainly that counts too. <clears throat> um, and I, I won't go into time to explain that right now. Human reactions are no longer dictated by circumstances, but by the lordship of Christ within. Okay, so you, you're thrown into a situation out of control. You know, people are panicking. I'm, I'm picturing the disciples in the boat when the storm comes up and, and the boat's starting to sink and they're in there and Jesus is asleep in the boat and they're going, wake him up, you know. <clears throat> and if I'm not mistaken, I'm almost absolutely positive that they, they woke him up and said this, Lord, <laughs> carest thou not that we perish? You know. Now, they forgot one thing. They forgot one thing. This was before there was a storm, before they were in the middle of the, the sea. They forgot one thing. When they were on land, Jesus pointed to a boat and said, let us get in that boat and go to the other side. Okay? If Jesus said we're going to the other side, we're going to the other side. We've got to learn to believe his word is from his heart out of the abundance of his mouth. That's his heart speaking to us, and we're going to be okay. All right, so, you know, let's take it out of the context now of those guys, put it in the context of us, and let's take it out of the context of a boat and put it in the context of your life. <laughs> and something coming up all of a sudden that could freak you out. Okay. These disciples didn't understand the Lord until after the cross. Our place is to be in tune with the Lord in relationship to death and resurrection. It's not your choice. I may choose, I may volunteer, I'll just say it like this, I may volunteer all the time for death. But there have been times when I volunteered, and he said, this, this is resurrection time for you. I go, well, you know, I want, you know. He goes, no, you have to, you know, it's all part of my life. It's my life cycle. It's the life cycle of the seed. It is the life cycle of Christ. <clears throat> and, you know, panic can hit. You can start freaking out and things. I was telling somebody fairly recently, you know, <clears throat> as a pastor, and, and I don't have near the problem I used to have, but when I was younger, you know, when I was really young in, in, in the 
pasture and someone would, you know, let's say everything's calm, there's no storm, someone would come up and go, oh my God, so-and-so did da-da-da-da, and it, you know, it's going to affect the church and all of this, and da-da-da-da, and I'd go, oh my God, you know, I'd react. And then I learned not to react, though I still didn't have it under control. Do you understand what I mean? As a pastor, this is not hypocrisy, this is a pastor. They're looking to you to bring some stability. And, you know, you're sitting there, you're, um, I'm, I'm thinking of a time at Mardi Gras, and we're all sitting around, we're not on the streets, but we're sitting, I'm sharing with everybody, and somebody comes over and whispers something in my ear, you know, and, and uh, I just nodded, okay, and finished what I was sharing, and, you know, or, or this last, what was it, last, not this past year, but the year before that when Greg died, and we're all here, and celebrating, we just ate, everybody's feeling good, and then somebody comes up and whispers, uh, da 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 you know. It's like, okay. You know, I mean, that the whole conference could go, you know what I mean? I mean, that could just brought everybody down. But, you, but out of that death, we, we preach life out of death. We're, we're not afraid of death. You know what I'm saying? We're, we belong to Christ and him crucified. So then you have to address it on that basis, and then everybody's faith rises again and goes, you know, that's right, you know, and being with the Lord in these things. So, uh, but most Christians are tossed on the water, and they're tossed on the water because they see the Christian life as this ongoing linear line that I, I drew. They don't see it as a, a cycle, this circle. They don't see it as a cycle. They see it as a linear line, and they started here, and they're working their way down this line. They, you know, they, they started at the beginning there, and they're working their way down the line, and they're wanting everything to be the best it possibly can be. And they're not wanting any big problems or anything, you know. And when the big problems come, they want to just rebuke the devil or, you know, or rebuke somebody that, <clears throat> you know. I mean, you know, Jesus didn't really rebuke Judas, and he knew well in advance, you know. He said, when, when Judas kissed him, he said, friend, friend, betrayest thou me with a kiss? You know. But he didn't say, you know, uh, in the upper room, guys, there's one here that's going to betray me. He did say that, and they all go, you know, is it me? Is it me? You know, because they're just like us. <laughs> but, he, but he could have just turned all of a sudden and gone, and it's you, Judas, get him, boys! You know, and then jumped on him, beat him up, kill him, and that'd be the end of the problems that were coming. Right? And where would we all be if he had done that? <laughs> yeah, not here, that's right. Some of us would be dead by now. <laughs> all right. So there's no way to describe this because <clears throat> the Lord hasn't fully broke that mindset in everybody's mind that's listening to this. So you're going you're gonna to continue to expect good things, and when bad things happen, you're going to wonder what is wrong with the Lord and why is he doing this to me and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> and, and he is in his heart going to have presented it as an, an opportunity because you claimed you wanted Christ crucified, and you didn't see it as that, and you turned on him just like others did, just like Judas did, and accused him. And, and said, why are you doing this to me? I've been good. I've tithed. I've done this and that. I, don't you remember all my service? You know, and he's going to go, yeah, and all that really doesn't count. It's this part that counts. I mean, that really counts. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's where I deter, detoured again when I said human reactions are no longer dictated by circumstances but by the lordship of Christ within 
All is to be governed by his nature, and it was to bring about this purpose for which he died. That's, in other words, this is the purpose for which he died, to bring us into the kingdom, to bring us into the ways of the king by the nature of the king. <clears throat> All right, the life that God glorifies. We only got a few minutes left here. The life that God glorifies. For believers to participate in Christ's resurrection life, not just in his resurrection. I, I'm always making a little... We do not just participate in Christ's resurrection. We participate in Christ's resurrection life too. Okay. I mean, see, we're always grabbing for something and making it something other than Christ. And he is all and in all. <clears throat> for believers to participate in Christ's resurrection, not just in his resurrection life, not just in his resurrection, is to experience the life that God resurrected and declared to be Lord, the crucified is the life that God resurrected and declared to be Lord. In other words, we are to live the life that glorified God and which he, glor he glorified back, the life of kenosis, the life of self-emptying. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Ooh, we jumped... Yeah. If we move on from here, we're going to jump into a big area with lots of paragraphs. So I'm going to cheat and do this. I'm sorry it takes me a few minutes to do this, but if I don't, I won't be keeping track of this and... I'll be reteaching this stuff over and over. Are there any questions? It's a glorious thing when you, because it, it endears you. I'm, I'm sorry I'm using this kind of term, but it endears you to the Father because that's the life he glorifies, which is the life of Christ and, and the nature of Christ. Because when we say the life of Christ, we may only think in terms of the resurrection. But when we say the forget the exact wording that I use. I really am slipping, slipping away here. Um, then we, we understand that it is Christ, and it's not just a resurrection, or it is not just a life that he gave unto us, but it is his very own life, and that that's exactly what God glorifies. Um, and in these things, they've moved me because I've realized you know, this is this is what the this is what the father cares about. This is why the father allowed this death, burial, and resurrection of his own son, so that there could be many more seeds. You know, except a seed fall into the ground and die. If Jesus was the only seed of his kind, which he was, he was the only one like him. Everybody else was in Adam and selfish. And if there's ever going to be a harvest, we're well, always talking about the harvest, but do we really understand the harvest? If he's the only seed, you know, here I go, but if he's the, <laughs> if he's the original seed of a different kind, let's just say that all other seeds look like this. Everybody in Adam looked like exactly like that, and Jesus came and he's the only one like that. 
then if he just leaves, you know, I came down here, I walked for three and a half years, I died on the cross, but now I got up and left, or it didn't die on the cross, just taught you the right way and said, you know, we, the kingdom way is to do it this way, although he said, I am the way. Yeah, but you know, if he did say it like that, then, then he left, there is no harvest. There is absolutely no harvest. But if that seed falls into the ground and dies, what's going to come back up? Like a wheat seed. All of those stalks of all of that wheat, exactly after its kind, that will do what? Fall into the ground and die until the harvest is in. And it's a oneness and it's a, uh, I, uh, um, being in tune with the heart of, of God instead of just um, teaching that we've heard and that we accept. And I'm not against, you know, I mean, I tell you, you know, yeah, listen to what I tell you and all this stuff, but don't, you know, don't just leave it at that. Go after the Lord, get into the word, you know, um, all this stuff that, that you write down or whatever, go back and look at it and pray over it. And, you know, I mean, I've got old Bibles that's got pages that are just smeared from tears of not, of not yet seeing the Lord, of going, I, I feel the vibe. I mean, you know, you could just feel he's right there. You know the Holy Spirit but I'm too dense right now and just wept over those scriptures and just pleading. I want to see Jesus. I don't want to just believe everything I've been taught. I want to see him for myself. And that's, that, that's my greatest desire. If you never get anything I ever say, if you just go to the Lord and he gives you completely different than, and he says, you know, that Randy was a heretic. Do follow this part. <laughs> Go to the Lord and find out from him what the real deal is. Father, we just thank you for your son, and we thank you that your spirit is on us and moving on us to uh, see the difference between uh, truths and him who is the truth. And we do, we do, Lord. We want to see Jesus. We don't want to just see, hear doctrine and and think because we heard that before that we know it but rather that we'll we're willing to hear it over and over and over again even by your spirit until it is part of who we are instead of what we believe thank you father for that is the intent of your heart and the reason why you release this whole thing from a seed falling into the ground and dying so that there'd be many more like that original seed and those kinds of seed, that kind of seed over and over, self-giving would bring the harvest that pleases you. Help us to see this by your word, your mouth, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're dismissed. <clears throat>